Yes, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining this session. Uh, so my name is Rohit, I work at Google, and we have been working on an open source specification to enable a chiplet marketplace, and we, we want to introduce that concept to this forum. Uh, we call this specification open chiplet, and I will walk you through a few slides to introduce that. So, I mean, we've gone through this ad in film, but what are chiplets in, in our view? It's just functional, verified, reusable, physical IP blocks. And um, the key thing is we have new packaging substrates and interconnect technologies which enable chiplets to happen. So we have had a long um, history with ODSA um, way back in November of last year when we had a virtual session. Um, we presented what we see, right? We see that the disaggregation is continuing in multiple segments. And there are many applications which benefit from disaggregation, compute, networking, video, all of them have to go disaggregated. Now, anytime you go disaggregated, there is always an option of doing closed or open. And we really want to accelerate the open ecosystem. That's our wish list for this. And so, the, the question that I posed at that session was, hey, how can we as an end user, so Google is an end user, how can we enable an open ecosystem? And let's have an open discussion on the whole semiconductor supply chain and the end user, how this can happen. And then um, we have participated in many meetings still uh, since then. Uh, one key one which, which I found very insightful was the ODSA workshop in April. Um, and I was told this was the largest attendance of any workshop in the history of OCP. So there's a lot of momentum behind this. And my key takeaways from that was uh, the, a, there is strong interest, right? You can see that. And secondly, that uh, there was a need which people felt to create an open chiplet specification, uh, which would enable a chiplet ecosystem. Uh, so, and so we, where does this need arise, right? If we dig a little bit deeper into this, this uh, insight that we took from that workshop. And I view it as a chicken and egg problem, right? So chiplet suppliers won't build chiplets until they see demand. And customers like us, we won't use chiplets until there are multiple suppliers. We can't afford to be with one supplier, so we want to see uh, multiple suppliers. And we need to break this loop, right? So if you look, I think we, we have stated many times that domain-specific architectures, systems will need to break this loop. So how do we build a standard to enable interoperable chiplets? And that's the basic question that we have been working on in Google for some time now. And that's the solution that I want to propose to the audience here as to how to build this kind of standard. So this is a solution. So if you look at it from a system requirement, like a system house like us, we have slightly different requirements than, uh, say, a traditional semiconductor vendor uh, might think of. Right? So for us, the, there are three, four aspects which are very important to enable integration of chiplets into our systems. Uh, first, manageability, right? So we need common interfaces and software stacks to ease integration. And it's, not, it's not just supply any kind of chiplet. There has to be some commonality in there. Uh, security, I think uh, it was an eye-opener for me as well. But security is, is truly very important for a cloud system. So we really need to drive higher standards on security and make it mandatory, so it should be not something as an add-on. Manufacturable and testability, I think this has been talked quite a bit, but we can't afford a small chiplet to bring down the whole system, right? So we need to make sure that the, that the chiplets are tested with a sufficient level of rigor, just like chips, so that we have confidence in that. And lastly, but not the least, uh, there has to be some physical footprint compatibility as well. This is actually quite challenging, but the idea behind this is that if we want to take anybody's chiplet from an ecosystem or a marketplace, there has to be some physical commonality also. Otherwise, hardware integration becomes a challenge. 
so in order to meet all of these needs, uh, we started working on this, and that's what I'm trying to introduce today here, uh, which is an open source solution which we call as Open Chiplet. So uh, what the Open Chiplet is, and we'll go deeper into this, but at a high level, it's a full stack solution. It goes all the way from software down to packaging. Um, and you will see why that is needed for a system house like us. It is a layered architecture. And so uh, we were kind of, um, we looked at the other standards like Ethernet and all of those, PCI, they're all kind of layered. So we wanted to build something where you could take components and if you don't want, like some components, you don't need to include them. And it uses uh, only standard interfaces, right? So that's in the spirit of open source, everything we are proposing here is built on top of open source or industry standards. And then um, we understand that for a, for a marketplace to succeed, both the consumer as well as producer have to make some money. Uh, or, or both the consumer and the producer both have to benefit. So we provide enough programmability for customization, right? We don't want to pigeonhole you into a small box, which makes it difficult to differentiate. And so I'm, I'm happy to say also that we have open sourced this specification, which I will go through uh, on GitHub. And as you go through, as I go through these slides, you will see that in each of these uh, in, in the specifications, I've listed specific points where I hope the ecosystem would take on an additional responsibility to contribute and make the specification even stronger. <clears throat> so now let me talk about the layers which I, which I introduced in the last slide. Um, so I talked about manageability, so we have this thing called OCML, which is the management layer. Uh, it's an open chiplet management layer. Embedded in the open, in the management layer is a security agent. Like I said, security is super imp important. Uh, we have another layer, which we call the build layer, which is nothing more, how do you build a chiplet, right? So this is your resets, clocks, and, and DFT sorts of things. And uh, finally, we have a power and, and electrical layer, which, which uh, mitigates the challenges of the physical footprint that I mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, we also have two informative layers, uh, which is the high-speed layer and the transport layer. I won't go into detail in, tho in those, uh, because I think those are places where there's a lot of work already being done in ODS and other places. So I'm going to skip those. And this is your die to dies and things of that nature. But these other layers, I will go in depth in the next slide. Uh, and one of the important things which you might see from my slide here is, that by using these kinds of um, layers, you can serve many markets, right? So I want to introduce a concept like an application-specific standard chiplet. So we have ASICs, we have ASSPs. I think there is a market need and a marketplace where, you guys, where people can start talking about standard chiplets, which could be used for multiple markets. Which, which, and like here, I'm showing you you can use it for hyperscale, you can use it for consumer, you can use it for 5G, automotive. Any of those could benefit from a simple chiplet which could meet all these markets. So in the next three, four slides, I will walk you through these layers that I have talked about uh, or introduced right now. So what is the management layer, right? So the management layer is something which allows the chiplet to be managed as, as if it wasn't evident already, <laughs> but it's out of band, okay? So this is like your I3C, we've, we've, we've focused on that. And this is a mechanism by which you have a plug and play discovery mechanism, just like PCI and USB. So a system integrator can look at it and be able to figure out the capabilities of the chiplet. And you can also provide, this also provides operational and telemetry data, right? So, uh, like I mentioned, my, our intent here is to share this with the community so that, they, and I'm going to list opportunities for collaboration. So, we would like the community, once they get a hand, hand on this spec, spec from the GitHub, to, to work and create an extensible discovery and configuration API. We have not included that right now. We would hope that 
the community can come forward and work on that. The, the management layer also contains a security agent. And this is very important uh, because if you think about it, a chiplet is a high value attack surface, right? All the data, um, if I'm just looking at a Surdis chiplet for instance, or an AI chiplet, all the data is going to go through that chiplet. So we cannot afford to have any bad actors in this space, right? So this is our, our thought behind building some kind of security agent which will ensure that, that there is 100% trust on all the chiplets at boot up time. Um, and the chiplets will never be the root of trust, that's our thought process here, but there'll be some key exchange to enable that. And again, here uh, we would hope that the community goes, comes forward and scrutinizes our security model and looks for gaps to make it more robust. Again, security is, is super important. At the build layer, this might be pretty self-evident, but these are your clocks and resets. These are, again, the things that you really, really need to make a chiplet a viable uh, standard product, right? And we have tried to put everything that we could think of, but welcome the community to put more stuff in there to make it more, more robust. And the physical layer, again, is, is a little more complicated. Uh, one of the knocks that people put onto chiplets is, hey, this is a hard block. It is like a physical block, unlike an IP, which is an electronic data exchange, right? So what we have tried to do is we've tried to build like a Lego layer, uh, Lego concept, where you, you have a base skew, and then if you want to scale up in bandwidth or scale up in capabilities, you can take these base ties and put them in parallel to, to go to the next level. So that way we hope that the, the, con the producers of chiplets get burdened with only a few SKUs rather than carrying a whole catalog, as well as the consumers, which would be people like us, can make systems in an efficient manner, even using those kinds of limited SKUs. All right. So the transport layer and high-speed layer, like I said, I'll, I'll skip over. So the thing is, if, if we are successful in making this uh, open chiplet marketplace, there's infinite possibilities at, as to what a next generation system could look like. Here I'm just showing, and this is not on our roadmap, so don't, don't take it literally, uh, but this is just a thought experiment, right? So if we had chiplets for, say, a Surdis chiplet, we had chiplets for accelerators, we had chiplets for ML, we could build a system where we could mix and match all of these chiplets to build the next generation system. Here, you have like an IO chiplet, you have an ML chiplet, and you have a system controller sitting in the middle which, which authenticates everything. So this would be a very, you could think of this as a very futuristic one, but certainly in the realm of possibility if we are able to make a chiplet marketplace succeed. All right, so this is my last slide. Um, uh, we've given, I've given you an overview of of our specification. And I think my intent to show, share this with you also is there's lots of opportunity to innovate and collaborate together, right? I mean, this is a problem that everybody recognizes and we put a stake in the ground, but we really invite stakeholders throughout the silicon and, and system supply chain to work together in making the standard robust. There must be a lot of things that we have missed um, and by by working together, we can actually fill in those gaps and make this, make this a viable thing for the future. Awesome, so, so that's all I had, thanks. Go ahead, Anu. So um, when you say for the future, how far out is this ecosystem that you see gonna be developed? Um, I, I, I think, are you, let me qualify that. What you're saying is probably an ecosystem where I could just buy a chiplet from some, someone else and use that. So right now, we don't see that. We don't see, uh, what I see is closed ecosystems everywhere, right? And I think we need something like this to move this forward. We have had some initial discussions with some vendors about, hey, let's put this together. Um, but I think it's still further ahead than what we'd like to see. So hopefully if the industry can get its acts together, 
and actually take this to heart. And you don't have to follow what I said. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm by no means the infallible here. But there is a need. And the sooner the ecosystem can come forward, the better they will be. I mean, the first one who gets there definitely wins the most. <laughs> Thanks.